Y'all know what's going on. It's time for another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker. Look here, let's talk about domestic violence, y'all. I think that we all can agree that domestic violence is a bad thing. I, I certainly believe that, and I hope that everybody that's listening to my show believes that too. But uh, let's for today, let's all agree that that's a bad thing, okay? And trying to make somebody love you, that's not love. Let's agree on that. You know what I mean? You shouldn't want to hurt somebody to love you. Trying to make them love you, it's just wrong. I mean, nothing right about that. And I'm going to get into that with this episode, right? Because I want to share a story with you about a guy that uh, shared his story with me on how he came out on the other side of this thing a better person. And the process that got him to the other side is one that I think a lot of people don't hear about. Uh, most definitely, uh, I think people that may be abusing their loved ones now, uh, people that don't think that they can do better, uh, they need to hear what I'm about to say. Because this episode, this story, when the guy was telling me about it, it simply uh, made me smile. It was a little gruesome in the beginning and the middle. But when he got to the end, I was just elated at the fact that he got it. He got it. You know what I'm saying? And all parties involved uh, in the situation are healthy, happy people now. And that's the side that I want to make sure that people that may be abusers now understand. You can get to the other side of this thing, y'all. You just got to give yourself a chance. Okay? With that said, I want you to sit back, relax, and soak it in. Soak it in, y'all, because it's going to get real. All right, check me out, y'all. This story, is it, it, it started, it happened back in the 90s. He's like, I think he told me it was 95, 96. He was on the streets at the time. And this is what happened, y'all. Let me break it down for you. This guy had been an abuser of his girlfriend for years. They were young lovers, high school sweethearts. And he, according to him, he loved her. And he told me he loved her so much that it wasn't anything that he wouldn't do for her. And he felt as if she felt the same way. But he felt like that when she would say or do certain things, that that gave him the right to hit her. When she looked at a man too long or another guy too long, it made him feel some type of way. And because he loved her and she loved him, he said he believed that gave him the right to hurt her, to get her back in line because she loved him. And that's what she needed to do. She needed correction. She needed discipline. And he was the one that was supposed to give that to her because he loved her as well. So I sat there and I listened to him tell this story. I didn't jump in. I wanted to hear what he had to say. I'm learning to do that, right? Because it was one of y'all out there, you know who you are, uh, that commented on one of the shows and told me, said, Joe, you know, when you interview somebody, let them do more talking than you, right? That's basically what he said. And I received that because it was true. I know I run my mouth a little too much, y'all, so I ain't tripping about that. So anytime that you have any criticism, you know what I'm saying? I know that you're trying to help me and help this show become the best that it can be under the circumstances. And I appreciate that and I received that. So I sat there and listened to him as he continued to talk because I didn't want to, you know what I'm saying, make him feel like I wasn't listening to him and I always wanted to put my two cents in it, right? So as he continued to talk, I realized that he was getting emotional with what he was saying. And I said, well, why do you, why are you feeling the way that you're feeling now? He said, man, because I want to tell you this whole story, right? And I said, I'm listening, bro. I'm not going anywhere. So tell me the whole story. So anyway, what happened is that, you know, they both graduated high school. And at this time, he was solidly an abuser. And she was solidly a victim of domestic abuse. She felt as if she deserved it. You feel me? He had convinced her of that. 
You feel me? And another thing that he told me, I want to point this out because this is important. He told me that this girl was beautiful. And I believe all women are beautiful. I do. But he told me she was beautiful. But he made her believe she was ugly. He made her believe she was ugly. And that played into uh, why she allowed him to beat her because she felt like nobody else would want her. And he was so insecure that he would tell the woman that he claimed to love that she was ugly and he was the only one for her. And if he couldn't have her, nobody else would have her. Nobody else would have her. But this is what happened. This is how fate steps in. He ended up getting locked up when he was 19 or 20. And he did a little time at the county jail, about three years. Now, while he was at the county, de- county jail, she found love in the arms of another man, temporarily. This other man happened to be his best friend. His best friend had been going over, taking, you know, checking on the girl, seeing if she needed anything. They didn't have any kids. He just would go over there because they used to hang out together anyway when all three, when they would all three be together. But now he would still do that just to check up on it, see what she had going on or whatever. And they started to have feelings for each other. She wasn't with the guy that was in jail anymore full time, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? She would take phone calls from him and go visit him every now and then, but she had let him know she was moving on with her life, but she never told him that she had moved on with her life with his best friend. She said, he said that she said she just couldn't bring herself to tell him that. So these whole three years, he said he was seeing another woman anyway, coming to visit him at the jail, but he still had this strong love for the girl, for his original girlfriend for his first love. So what happened is this. He gets out of jail. When he gets out of jail, the hood is talking about the relationship that she was having with his best friend, which they had broken up at this time. They had broken up at this time. So she's single again. She's single. So he's so angry, so upset with dude because he said dude betrayed him. He betrayed him by doing it because they were best friends and he never told him the whole time he was in the jail. Never told him. So I'm listening to him tell the story, right? So I said, so you still loved her. You were mad at him because he betrayed you. And I said, I want to ask you something. He said, go ahead. I said, I took a deep breath just like I did. And I said, "Uh, I don't mean any disrespect. But did he take it from her? Did he rape her during that relationship? Because I'm assuming that they were intimate during the relationship. And he said, no. So she gave herself to him. He was like, yeah. So he didn't force her. He's like, no. He said, I know where you're going with this, but it still ain't right. I said, I'm going to agree with you on that. Y'all best friends, y'all best friends. At least if they were going to do that, they should have told you. I give you that. And then he said, but let me finish telling you the story. So I shut up. (laughs) It wasn't as hard as I thought it would be to shut up and listen, but I did it. I shut up. And as he was talking, he said, me and another friend was riding in the car one night and I'm drunk. I said, okay, you're drunk. You're riding in the car. What's going on? He said, and I see dude. He said, and I saw dude, I told my partner to pull over. I jumped out. He said, I hit him with the two-piece, knocked him down. And then he said, I told my partner, hand me that thing. And my partner said, man, I ain't even got it out with me, man. He said, but come on, man, let's go, man. You done done enough. He jumped in the car, and they sped off, and they left, right? Now, let me back up. Let me back up. When he had dude on the ground, and he had done knocked him down, and he asked his partner in the car for the, for the gun, and his partner in the car said, I ain't got it. I ain't bringing it with me. And then dude on the ground, he didn't hear the dude in the car say, I don't have it with me because he yelled out, man, don't do that to me. Don't do that to me. Don't kill me. Right. But then, you know, my partner that I'm talking to about this story, he jumps back in the car and he speeds off. Right. So when they're gone, they go to the other side of town. 
They go to the other side of town. And they run into some other friends. You know what I'm saying? And they all get together and they're talking or whatever. And one of the guys comes up to the car. One of the other guys that they all know come up to the car. He said, man, let me get that from you. So the dude that's driving the car, he reaches under the seat and he hand him the tech. So my partner that's telling me the story, he looks at him and is like, man, why why did you not give that to me? He said, man, bro, he said, I'm agreeing with you that what he did was wrong, but you can't do that. I'm not going to stand for you doing that, man. He said, man, she didn't want to be with you. You know what I'm saying? Look at all the things you did to her, and then you end up getting locked up, and you didn't think she was going to go find her somebody that was going to comfort her. He said, man, no, nah, I didn't want to see you go out like that. She's moved on. You need to move on. So he said he got all mad and got out of the car and walked home and all this and that. He pissed, but he he drunk. He said when he got home, he went to bed. He woke up the next morning. He was sober, and he remembered everything that his partner in the car had told him. Every single thing his partner in the car had told him. So he went looking for dude that he fanned and put the two-piece on, right? And when he found him, he told him, man, can we talk? He said, yeah, we can talk. Now, when he looked at dude, he seen dude got a black eye and a busted lip. He said, did I do that? He was like, yeah, you did that. He said, I apologize, man. I said, so you apologized to him the very next morning? He was like, yeah. He said, man, it was something about what my partner in the car said. He said, man, all the stuff that I did to her, why did not I think she was going to go find her somebody else that was going to comfort her? He said, that stuck with me. That hit me. I said, okay then, so did you go talk to her? And he said, I tried to, but she was scared of me. I said, man, she was scared of you. He's like, yeah, she said, he said she had heard about what he done to do that night. So she was scared. She thought he was coming to hurt her because that's her, their history. He's hurt her in the past. So he said he stood at the door and he talked through the door. He said he don't know if she was on the other side of the door or not. But he's told, he's yelling through the door, I'm sorry. I apologize for everything that I did to you. He said he stood there for about five minutes. She never opened the door and then he walked away. He walked away. And he said about two months later, he saw her at the grocery store and he waved at her. He said he didn't want to walk up on her because he didn't want her to be afraid of him. He said he didn't realize how afraid of him she was. He didn't realize that what he had done to her had fu- had messed her up like that. He didn't realize that. He didn't realize how much harm he had done to her. So he stood back and he waved at her. And he stood there and he watched her and she walked up to him. Now listen to that, because that's important. She walked to him. She made the decision. She was learning then to assert herself and make her own decision if she wanted him in her space. So she walked to him and she spoke to him and he apologized again. And she said, I heard you the other night. I mean, a couple of months ago when you was yelling through my door the other night on that night, about that night, rather, excuse me. And he said, I didn't know if you heard me or not. And he said, I talked to my my friend and I apologized to him too. She said, I heard about that too. She said, I hope you get some help. And I wish you the best. And he said, uh, like a lot of people do, he said, can I take you out? And she said, no, no, we can't do that again. And he said, I understand. And he said, when she said that, he felt his blood boiling, but he didn't give in to it. He didn't give in to it. He did not give in to it. Now, he ended up doing some other things. He ended up in prison, and this is when I meet him. And I said, when he's telling me the story, I said, well, how is your relationship with her and him now? And he said, man, you're not going to believe this. He said, man, me and dude are just as cool now as we were before I went to the county jail years ago, and he messed with my girl. I said, man, that's what's up. I said, so what is the what is the lesson that you would like to impart to people about this story? And he looked me right in my eye. Now, he's shorter than me, so he had to look up, right? 
So <laughs> he'll be pissed if he hear that. But anyway, he looked up to me and he said, man, the lesson that I learned the most that I would want people to know is that if you are an abuser, that you can get through it. If you accept what you've done, accept what you've done, don't blame nobody else. And he said, it's going to hurt. Because when you say you love somebody and you crush them like that and you just tear their spirit down and tell them that nobody else is going to want them, make them to believe that they're ugly. When you do somebody like that and then you accept responsibility for that, that hurts. He said, but I had to do it. I had to do it. Because he said, when she wouldn't open that door, he said, that did something to me. She was scared of me. He said, and I don't want people that I say I care about to be afraid of me. He said, that's not love. That's not love. It's not love. So I said, you and him are cool. What about you and her? He said, man, I've talked to her a few times since I've been, you know, in prison. She's married, got two kids, got a good dude. She good people. She got good people. And I'm happy for her. I said, well, how do you feel about her? Do you still care about her? He said, I still love her. But I had to let her go. I had to let her go. Not just because she didn't want to be with me. He said, in my heart, I had to accept that and had to let her go. And once I did that, then I started to feel real love for her because I wanted her to be happy, even if she wasn't with me. I looked at him and I started to clap for him. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't, right? Because I didn't want it to get too corny. You understand what I'm saying? But I'm like, man, that's real profound that you understand that if you really, really love somebody, that you want them to be happy. You want the best for them, even if it's not with you. I said, that took a lot. He said, it took a lot of years for me to get to that point. But he said, you can do it. He said, I'm proof of it. You can do it. And he said, my partner, he sends me money. He comes to visit. We this, this, and that. I said, do y'all ever talk about it? He said, no, we don't talk about it because it's not an issue. He said, I'm not talking about it because I'm ignoring. He said, it's not an issue. It is not an issue. It is not something that we need to talk about. It's over. I said, bro, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. And I wanted to share this story with you especially my guys out there that's listening. And I know we got women abusers too, but I'm mainly talking to the guys. You can get through it, man. You can get through it. It's not going to be as bad as you think. If you really love somebody, you won't hurt them. You won't hurt them, even if you've been hurt. You can get some help for that. You can get some help for that. But if you really love them, you won't hurt them. You won't. And if you do love them and you do hurt them, in your mind, if there's love, let them go. Don't try to force somebody to love you by hurting them. They won't love you. They'll only fear you. They'll only fear you. Just wanted to drop that on, y'all. This has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, and I say peace, y'all. <laughs>